you compromise your values, like George Bernard Shaw when he, uh, they say that he met a woman and he asked if she would go back to his hotel with him for a million quid, a million pounds. And she said yes. And then he said, what about 20 quid? And she slapped him and said, what kind of woman do you think I am? He said, we've already determined that. Now we're haggling. I once asked my father, do you think people sign a devil's contract with a piece of paper? He said, no, it's a long series of negotiations. You compromise your values. Once you compromise your principles, then that, that's it. So you just do it slowly. The first time you don't take a bribe, but then you start thinking about it. Mm, I could use that money. Then the next time the bribe's offered, you take it. This is how it works. So Allah says, don't follow the khutawat of shaitan. He's commanding you to do foul things. And had it not been for Allah's grace and his mercy, there would none of you would have been purified. Because the purpose of your life on earth is tazkiyah. If you follow shaitan, he will corrupt your heart. By rejecting shaitan, you're purifying your heart. And this is tazkiyah. On that day, nothing will avail the human being. No benefit except the one that comes with a pure heart, with a sound heart, with a wholesome heart. Allah does tazkiyah, purifies whom he pleases, but he purifies those who struggle. If you look, re re all of the research that we have indicates that media violence has increased in quantity, but it's also more graphic, more sexual, and more sadistic. This is the khutawat of shaitan. If you watch films from the 1940s, the 1930s, the 1950s, see, you can see it's slow. This is how shaitan gets people. He pulls them step by step. These are his khutawat. You start watching films, they introduce violence. In my country, one of the landmark films was a film called Bonnie and Clyde. With, uh, see, people know Warren Beatty. Yeah. There, there's a hadith that in the end of time, the shayateen will, will take forms and they'll, they'll, they'll tell you fictional stories and you'll say, I, I can see his face, but I don't know his name. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari. And there's a website of actors. The website is called, you know their faces, but can't remember their names. That's a hadith. It's amazing. Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So that film was a major change in America, in, in cinematography, because before that, Graphic violence was not permitted. But this film showed blood, gore. Now that film looks tame compared to what they have out. These are the khutawat of shaitan. And shaitan wants violence and sex are his two. These are because they're very powerful for the human psyche. And these are the two ways that he can really corrupt the heart. I'm, this is from the United States, so I'm using statistics from the U.S. But but it's all coming to you, unfortunately. So 80% of R-rated movies, right? 70% of restricted video games and 100% of music with explicit content, warning labels were being marketed to children under 17. So they know what they're doing. These are the minions of shaitan. Whether they're conscious of it or not, we believe in freedom of speech, we believe in artistic expression, we're not sowing corruption. No, they're the corruptors. But they're unaware. So many of them are literally minions. By the time the average child in the United States is 18 years old, they will have seen 200,000 acts of violence and 16,000 murders. What do you think this is doing to the psyche? Why do you think America is such a violent country? Seriously, there are other reasons. This is one of the reasons. We have a history of violence in the United States. But our children have been programmed to be violent. Media violence is especially damaging to young children under eight because they cannot easily tell the difference between real life and fantasy. The American Pediatric Association warns that children should not see any television now. This is a, a protocol from a few years back. They shouldn't see any television before the age of three because of the effects they know that it has. 
that was actually a compromise because the evidence shows that they really shouldn't be seeing any in television while their brains are developing. But these are compromises because the television industry is so powerful. And if you don't think industry has an effect on, on, on medicine, just look at the food pyramid. Because the food pyramid in the United States was changed because of the dairy and meat lobbies. Because they warned people about dairy and meat. So they got it changed. So industry, medicine is in service of industry. It's not medicine in service of humanity. It serves industry. They know Scientific America proved that television is a low-grade addiction. People become addicted to television. It's like tea. So TV and film. You have so much children's violence. This is a cartoon for children. You know, this is traumatic for kids. Trust me. We ha I have a, a, a person I know who was a, a child psych psychiatrist, and he told me he had so many children that had Disney film trauma. Every single Disney film has a dead mother or a mother who dies in the film. Why do they do that? It's traumatic. They know what they're doing. Disney is an evil empire. And I am not, this is not a joke. Disney is an evil empire. And why does Disney spread this global message out to turn little girls into princesses? We don't want, you know, uh, all you need is one princess in a country. Or maybe, okay, you have nine sultanates, so you have to have more. But you don't want a lot of princesses in a country. You want women that will serve, that will work, that will do things. They don't expect everybody to do it for them. And I know your, uh, the, the, the sultanas here serve and do things. That's true. But the Disney princess is served. And all the children are little warriors. So they have this violent attitude uh, in their uh, film. I mean, look at this. You know, it's just unbelievable. 